Hey, thanks for joining. Today we're going to go through an engine teardown on a 2007 CVR 1000. If you need to see how to get the engine out of the bike, I'll put a link to that video in here. Now to start disassembling this engine, we're going to start by pulling the head cover off, pull the cams out, pull the head off, so let's go. Right now we can go ahead and remove this uh, cam chain guide. Check that for wear. This one's nice and smooth. Now we're going to pull <coughs> this cover off the side of the engine. This is the right side of the engine. There's an O-ring in there. Now down in here, there's marks on this uh, gear. There's a T mark, F mark, there's another line. We're looking to line up the T mark with this notch in the case. So we'll turn this clockwise until we get the T mark lined up here. Then we'll be looking for an intake and exhaust line that should be in line with this. If they are not, we're going to have to go another 360 degrees to the T mark again. Now the T mark is lined up, but the intake and exhaust is not lined up. These should be on the outside, so we're going to have to go another 360 degrees. Now we're lined up like we're supposed to be right here with the end right there, parallel with the head. Exhaust right there, parallel with the head. Now we can remove the cam chain tensioner. Honda says use a special tool for this, pop this out, retain it. If you just completely remove one of these bolts and then move on to the other one and just slowly back it out, this will come right out, you won't have to worry about it. You will, will still have to get in there. Actually, I'm going to break this bolt loose while it's still attached to reset it when you put it back together, but you don't need to go through locking that in right now. Now, if you're checking the clearance on your valves, you can do that. Um, I'm not really going through the book right now to say exactly where you need to be, but basically, if these lobes are facing up, you can check the gap throughout that. I've already checked them on this motor. Um, I know they're good. I'll still give a little bit of a how-to on how to actually adjust them as we're going through this. We're going to pull the cams out. Um, I'll pull a bucket so you can see that and how you can change shims and I'll put a link in the description to a sheet that will help you make all the calculations if that's what you're trying to do here. Um, it, it's really not all that hard at all. So now we're going to start taking our cam holders off and we'll loosen these bolts up from inside to outside in a crisscross pattern. These are marked left and right so you won't be able to mess them up. So this feels kind of jammed on me. I'm going to pull down on this side because this opened up right here a little bit and see if that doesn't release this side. Throughout the process of removing and installing the cams, just make sure that you're not binding anything. That's why I'm going back and forth here and making sure that I don't bind anything or force anything. I'm going to do the same thing right here, tighten this one down a little bit. Just to get that to pop up. You can apply a little pressure right here underneath this cover to get it off. I wrote in on this can, EX for exhaust on this can. You don't want to go by the impressions because they both actually have an intake and an exhaust mark on them. Seeing how we're pulling everything apart, I'm not super worried about it right now, whether I drop this uh, chain or not. You may want to if you're not going down all the way into the engine, so you could just block it with something like that. You're going to tip this 
or each of the cams and pull them out one at a time. Now, if you're making a shim adjustment on here, you're gonna have to pull these buckets out individually and change the shims out. So to do that, I like to have a magnet. Just grab the bucket, pull it up. A lot of the times the shim will come with the bucket. So you'll end up pulling that out. And they should be marked what they are on it. This is marked as what appears to be a 208. So if we were making an adjustment, we would be using that for the math to figure out what shim goes in there. And again, I will put a link to uh, the sheet that'll help you figure out how you're actually adjusting it at that point. Now we need to pull the head off of the engine. There are 10 bolts inside the head here and two on the outside. The bolts on the inside here are 12 millimeter. The bolts on the outside are 10 millimeter. You're gonna be break, just breaking these loose in a crisscross pattern from center to outside and then removing them. You might need to support the motor while you're doing this. So now, like I said, I mean, we're getting into the bottom of this engine, so it doesn't matter if I drop this. I'm just gonna let it go because I'm pulling the head off right now anyhow. One thing I didn't do yet is there is a water line that goes up to the back of this head um, you can pull the whole housing off. I'm just going to disconnect the uh, coolant line right here from the water pump and pull that with the head. Why am I struggling? Because that wire is stuck. I'm just going to roll this motor over to see how everything looks, but I want to keep tension on this cam chain because I don't want to wad up down on the crank. It sounds like this piston is jumping a little bit. Something we got a problem down on the uh, connecting rod bearing on this cylinder. Now we'll start removing everything else that's going to be in our way. So we'll start up here with this part of the cooling system. All right, we found some oil. I'm just going to let that marinate over there for a minute. Now we'll pull the water pump right here. And we're going to need to drop this line up here. Pull the flywheel cover. This is magnetic, so you got to fight with it a little bit. you got to pull it straight. There it is. Now we'll pull our clutch cover. get this wire out of the way. One thing you want to watch, this washer came off with that cover. That goes right there. This whole gear just pulls right off along with the pin. Now we'll pop the rotor off. We can take our timing chain and the timing chain gear. I want to get these cam chain guides out of the way, so let's take those off quick. Now we can remove our clutch. As soon as we find the 10 millimeter, we'll just give up and grab another 10 millimeter. Now we can pull our clutch plates out. Look at that, we almost got the whole stack.
Now I need to unbolt the clutch center here. This has got a retainer nut, so you're going to need to bend that guy out a little bit. Now this takes a 30 millimeter 12 point socket. And I'll just set all that right in there and actually, and I'm going to throw a zip tie through that. There's a washer that goes on the back of it as well. Zip tie through this will hold everything together until I'm ready to put it back on. Now our clutch basket will pull off. Probably should have waited for my zip tie. I could have put this in there too. Clutch basket has a bearing. And there is also a bushing that goes inside of that. And then behind that, this is the drive and the drive chain for our oil pump. There's a bushing inside this. If we get that out, then we can get the chain off right now. Now remember, you've got two slits on this. The other side does not have any slits, so that's the way that it goes in. The slits were facing out. Off the chain. Hey, I'd like to just jump in here. Um, if you're enjoying this video, if it's helping you out, please like. And if you would, subscribe if you think you could use more of my videos. I would really appreciate it. Now we're down to our transmission. That's the next thing that we're going to pull. We'll pull this whole assembly out. Pull that out. Transmission will come with it. First, we need to disconnect our gear shifting cam from the other side of the motor. While we're in here, we can pull our starter gear. As you're pulling these covers, watch for your dowel pins. One right here for our clutch cover. The other one came with the cover itself. And one for our head here. The other one's in the head. I'm going to pull that and put that with the head bolts. Now we'll move on to pulling apart the shifting assembly over here. Now this should just pull right out. You may want to hold the spring as you're pulling on it. Almost missed it. There's a small washer here, so that'll go right there. I'm going to keep that with it. And then we're going to want to unbolt this side of the gear shifting cam. Now we'll remove the transmission from the engine. First thing I'm going to do is pull the uh, neutral switch right here. I'm not sure if it'll be in the way or not, but it doesn't hurt just to pop it out. Now we're going to remove the 12 millimeter bolts holding the transmission in. I'm going to take my seal puller so I can get behind this plate and get it to separate. I'm going to pull the whole transmission out as one unit. If we don't need to service this, it'll be fine. Just make sure that you don't let your uh, dowel pins drop here for your shifting forks. It's really not that hard to put back together, but if you can keep it together, it saves a little step. Now we'll remove the top crankcase bolts. There are six 10 millimeter head bolts, two here, one there, and three up front here. And then there's five 12 millimeter right here. One, two, three, four, five. Again, you want to do a crisscross pattern. Now we're going to flip the motor upside down. Probably lose some more fluids when I do this. Well, obviously, because we are already. Now we'll remove the pan. Remove the oil pickup tube. We'll remove the oil pump to get that out of the way.
This oil filter is in the way of one of our bolts, so we're gonna have to remove that. Now we would need to remove our small 10 millimeter head bolts from the bottom of the case here. And finally, our main journal bolts will be the last ones we need to take out to split this case. You've got six inside and four outside. So this bolt will not come all the way out of the case unless you pull this sight glass. I don't think I need to actually get it completely out, so I'm just gonna leave that one there for now. It appears I missed one bolt right down here. I didn't see it when the oil pump was in there. It's right down past where that is. We are gonna have to get that guy too. Now you'll see here I'm using a rubber hammer. Make sure you use a rubber hammer for this. All right, the back just started popping up. I just used a 3 8 extension to give me a little leverage, tapping it there. Now I'm gonna bring it back down. Try to get this as straight as possible while I get the front to pop off. All right, front is starting to pop. There we go. Now watch for your dowel pins, your oil passages. So I've got one dowel pin that stayed right here, one that's right there. You see right here, we've got play in this rod. That's where our noise was coming from. Remember these cases are really sharp. They will cut you if you slip. Now I'm checking for play in the rest of the rods. Everything seems to look good. Also remember band-aids don't stick well to oil. We'll just fish that out of the crankcase. It'll be fine. What's nice about the assembly lube is it's red too, so once I start bleeding when I put it back together, you won't even know the difference. Everything is slippery right now. Now the bearing here should have came up with the rod end cap. Bearings have spun on this crank and they have worn down the crank and they've worn down the inside diameter of the rod here. Right here I'm feeling for grooving on this crankshaft and I can feel it. Now I'm going to remove this piston because I'm going to have to change this rod as well. Throw this piece of trash rod cap. Now I ordered all new bearings for it, but... Yeah, but. But you're going to have to check out the next video for that. Check out the complete playlist of disassembling and reassembling this bike in the engine. Nailed it! I might leave that.